by Jagrat Sharma. The shipyards in the city of Milan in Ohio, USA in 1852. The only sounds are the gentle lapping of the waters, the rhythmic pounding of tools and the questions of a young boy. Born a few years earlier on February 11th, 1847, a boy named Thomas Alva Edison. He was full of questions. His endless questions sometimes irritate many people. For example, what type of ship are you building? And what type of wood is that? What type of wood floats the world best? How will the ship take you to build? How long do most take? How long an exit? He was a box of questions. One day, Thomas was coming back from his school, crying, and when he reached home, he shouted, "Mama, Mama!" His mother came out and said, "Alva, what's wrong with you?" Then he explained. that today in a school master mr crawford said i haven't worth having in school what do you mean he said i was adult adult he called you that a short while later her mother reached in the school she said my son is smarter than the lot of you mr crawford Then Mr. Crawford said, "I don't think you understand, Mr. Mrs. Addison." Then, added Mrs. Addison said, "No, it's you who don't understand. I will teach my son myself." Then, about three months later, the mother started teaching his uh, Tom Thomas by herself. She made the library of his father as his school room. so after a period of time thomas became a uh, became a newspaper seller and a candy seller in a train he sell candies and newspapers in train but he got a little penny for that then one day addison thought that if i will sell these things only by uh, buying it from other people and selling it i will get a very less penny for that but if i instead of just selling someone else i can maybe i can make my own my own newspaper so he he, he called that Harold he issued that newspaper and he called that Harold and started selling it and made a guideline that the grand trunk Harold get the latest issue hot of the presses with all the current news and uh, what about the next next was Thomas life most the most life changing event which happened when a child was coming near a train line and thomas f- f- ran too fast and saved that child but fortunately that child was the ch- boy who happened to be the son of the local station master then when the local station master heard this he ran to uh, to his child and he said you saved my son you saved my jimmy I have to repay you a a a reward of some kind. Then Alva said, "Well, there's something you could do." Then Alva said, "You could teach me how to operate a telegraph." Then the station master nodded and said, "Okay, as you wish. I will be more than happy for doing that." Then the station master took a th- a Thomas to. his office and said this is a telegraph this is the fastest form of communication thomas we can send messages all across the country along these wires out there 
the messages we send or use Morse code. So a telegraph operator has to not only know how to read the coded messages but also how to run the machines. A way of communicating letters are represented by a series of dots and dashes. Oh yeah. Edison already knew Morse code. It was something he had taught himself. As we all know, he was a fond of books. And with the station master's help, he learned the telegraph in just three months, giving him the skill to hire a telegraph operator as just 15 years of age. It was just the starting of his life. For five years, Thomas Edison travelled from city to city working as a telegraph operator. For five years, he journeyed from Ontario to Toledo to Indianapolis to Cincinnati. For five years, all of his colleagues worked during the day so they could spend their nights drinking and partying. And for five years, Edison gladly worked the lonely night shifts he needed his days for something far more important from than party that thirst and curiosity he had as a young boy had never lessened i then the thomas thought i want to do more than just send coded messages i want to understand about the batteries and circuits that make up these machines. I want to experiment and create. I want to invent a machine of my own. One day, he was doing an experiment in the office of his boss. But that failed and the room was like the dirtiest ever. Then his sir came in the room after some time and Alison was not there. He shouted, she cried loudly, what happened to my office? Then his crewmate told him that it was Addison. He was doing his experiment upstairs. He spilled some acid and it went right there, the floor and into your office. Then, the, then his boss said, tell him he is fired. I want him gone from here immediately. Now Addison was out of job and he was not able to do any job. Then he, he, but he never, he never ever got distracted from his aim to invent something. So from Louisville, Addison traveled to Orleans and Boston and eventually New York in 1867, 1869, where, where Thomas thought, I think I've done it. I think I just perfected my first invention. Then Addison showed his invention in an exhibition. He showed to big people that I have invented an electric vote recorder. With this device, we can count up the votes in an election much faster and get the results quicker. But for what he failed to realize about that is that politicians didn't want immediate results in an election. They wanted extra time to change voters' opinions and collect more votes. Then Alva thought my invention was a clever idea. It was well designed and it works, but it still failed. No one wants to buy it. Then he had an idea in his mind. One thing that businessmen needed was information. The current prices of stocks and precious metals like gold. Edison was hired to repair some of the equipment at the gold exchange shop in New York and was asked to create an improved stock sticker machine that could quickly send price changes along telegraph wires. It's time devoted all my time to inventing. After the invention, he called the device the universal stock printer and was paid $40,000 for his invention by the Golden Stock Telegraph Company, the equivalent of more than a half a million dollars today.
now with those 40 million dollars he opened his own lab and worked endlessly rarely sleeping overseeing both the day and night shifts and watching everything every employee did he he just hired some staff for helping in his experiments he said keep working everyone remember that no experiments are useless then the loan distraction he afforded himself was a chance to notice an employee by the name mary stillwell they courted less than three months before they married on christmas day in 1871 mary spent their wedding night alone as her new husband retreated back to his jo- lab it seemed that Addison's heart belonged to another. His first love, his true love, was inventing. Addison worked himself to exhaustion 100 nights in a row to try and perfect what he called his quadruplex telegraph. Along just one telegraph wire, this machine can send a total of four messages, two in each direction. More messages, fewer wires. Fewer costs. Addison was offered $40,000 for his breakthrough. Inventing was all that mattered for Addison. His workroom at the Menlo Park lab had no clock because the time of the day was unimportant. Addison also played pipe organ. He was good at that also. He called his lab as a factory, an invention factory. Then, one day he had an idea that sound if we can transmit voices then why can't we also record them as we know graham bell has made a telephone which can transmit voices then why can't we record them then he thought that if we can capture the vibration of our voices um i think a needle there we go some type of disc i think we could try tin foil and once we have the markings for the sound in the foil disc we could put the needle into the markings and play the sound back oh great idea but in this work like always he forgot the family meal with his family and he frequently skipped my family meals his his child asked her mom mommy when is daddy coming home then she said i don't know dear i don't know his daughter marion would of, would often bring a lunch to the lab for him and always included his favorite food pie but then also he always thinks about inventions only and in 1877 he was finally ready to test his sound writer or phonograph as he called it then he to test him he said mary had a little lamb and it replied when he played that mary had a little lamb it worked on the very first attempt many months later in 1878 bell graham bell was asking about to his father then addison is going further very fast so he also had invented a telephone so he also asked to start his experiments so he make his way in many different things then after some time addison was in a library and he thought in his mind when he heard from many people other inventors have tried creating light heating materials until it gives off a glow but the materials always melt or burn after a few seconds and the light can't be sustained he does he tested many different methods perhaps a way to cool the bulb was not fine he was not able to find when he tried he always the bulb always melts or burns 
then for more material for testing with it more material he had he had some money but he don't have that much so he liked to well the investors about his progress edison said it's going to be a massive success just a few finishing touches and you won't believe what i've done and he took some money from those investors and test started testing the bulb again and again he did that with uh, over 1600 different materials using everything from platinum platinum to beard hair then he after some time he was fine he had an idea if i use the sealed container without an ear hmm that sealed container will now be called as a bulb he had an idea and still the experiments labored on for for months as he continued testing different materials by october 1879 about a year after he began he tested a filament made of carbonized cotton thread inside his bulb the light shone for more than 13 hours until the glass bulb cracked not success not yet i want my bulbs to last for days for weeks this is just the beginning then an incident happened on august 9 1884 Addison was crying and then her daughter Marian ran coming coming ran and asked father what wrong then he was also not feeling right to tell about the reason that his mother her mother had died early that morning from congestion of the brain Marian was also crying but then after some time they were good and he made marian study hard like him then in 1886 thomas remarried by a woman named mina miller she asked thomas where are you going i told you i invited some friends for dinner and we haven't even sat down to eat yet then he said just a bit of work to do mina I have some ideas to sort throughout. Now Edison opened his latest invention factory, where and where a needle and a screw to so superior things were available there, and other research facility that he began allowing other inventors to conduct their research at this lab. So, for a fee, he always did work for a fee. Of course. Addison still remembered the lesson from his first failure the importance of turning a profit many people in the world many scientists in the world were finding to make a first motion picture camera and someone was finally succeeded to do that and that someone was as we all know Thomas Alva Edison and just some things were left if there is a camera so movies must all be there so he did the same and made some movie center made a movie center also where movies can be easily shooted the moving picture camera which edison invented which was known as the kinetoscope then was becoming very famous he took penny and had made that and kept it in a exhibition and the first the first film was a boxing video which was of 90 seconds those 90 seconds of thing which people had never seen before finally addison because the reason we know his name the first light bulb he invented that nikola tesla as we know he was also in he had also invented a light bulb but that was uh, not successful because it had done spark and had fire in a house and nikola tesla was fail burst but 
Edison was finally succeeded to make that bulb that much capable to be the world's first bulb. Just after Edison's death at 10 p.m. on October 22, 1931, U.S. President, however, Hoover requested not just a minute of silence to honor Edison's work. The world was now full of lights. All thanks to Edison, the hero. This was the whole biography. Thank you.